Shut up and sit down. World-class cannabis seeds. Available online or in stores. Yo, 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 what up, OGs? Grow420 get here, and welcome back to Season 6 Continued Day 3 of Germination. So, the last time we left off with the video, we had our seeds on our dinner plates, and they were kind of just chilling right here in the middle of the room on a table. But, last night it was way too cold in here. It was about 65 degrees Fahrenheit which is way too low for a germination. And um, so we had to do something about that. Typically you want your temperatures at least 75 degrees, even around upwards of the 80 degree mark for germination or propagation. Um, so yeah, this is what I did to kind of ghetto rig a little fix for overnight until you know I was able to do something today about it. So this is what we did. It really is not a, a good fix at all, but it was literally all I could do so this little power supply that powers my monitor here um, actually gets rather warm. So I know heat rises, but this is like the warmest area of my room. So we kind of just had all the plates just sitting here. Um, it really didn't get any warmer. 69 degrees. So realistically, it rose 4 to 5 degrees, um, which it was, it's better than 65. But realistically, we want to get up to at least 75 um, upwards of like 78 to 80 degrees. Um, so today, I went out to the hydroponic shop. Oh my God, I almost fell over the chair. And we purchased a couple of things. We got this thing right here. Um, basically a, what am I trying to say? A heat mat. Generally, I would have liked to order this from growace.com just because I would have saved more money, but I needed it like pronto, ASAP. So that's the reason for that. Um, we got this tray for them because I've been on dinner plates and this will help get the paper towels off of the actual sitting water if there is any. Um, got a Sharpie because I don't even have a Sharpie here. And we got some, um, some label makers so we can label our seeds instead of use the actual packaging. So I've had the heat plug, the heat pad plugged in for about 15-20 minutes now and it's nice and warm. I don't have an actual temperature gauge for the thing just plugs right in and as you can see here what's it say um approximate days to germination so it gives you like a list of a bunch of different seeds vegetables and shit um it did say something where did it say oh right here so this mat is designed to raise rooting area temperatures approximately 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient air temperature. So that's basically exactly what I need. If I could raise my temperatures 10, 15, even 20 degrees, I'm going to be sitting at the perfect temp range. So this should work awesome for us. Let's get this over here. Okay. Bada boom, bada bing. That should be good like that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take our plates over here. Now, um, I haven't actually added any water to our paper towels. They have stayed moist through the night, and that's how I know the temperatures are too cold. These paper towels should be drying out. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our seeds, and we're going to get them labeled and placed into their new home to finish germination. I figure these girls probably got, I don't know, a couple more days to go either a day all the way up to four days now if you're germinating and you're not seeing anything within a week um, I'd still let them hang out try to correct all of your um, variables and your conditions and if you're still not seeing anything after about a week and a half to two weeks then the seeds not going to be viable just go ahead and dump it and start over um, so what do we need we need you I need the tripod too for this I'm all over the place, oh geez. That's what these glogs are all about though. Hardly any cuts, just like complete real uh, raw updates of what's going on. All right, get a little focus action for you guys. All right, that should be good. So 
we're gonna label these. We're gonna place them in first, and then we will take an up close look at um, our seeds and, and how they've progressed thus far, being day three into germinating. So we got train wreck auto boom. Place you there. And this is gonna go right there. Um, and we got NYCDA. And we got Bubba Kush. Feminized. And last but not least, we got a green crack, GCF. Okay. Now we just gotta make sure we put them in the right areas. GCF, NYCDA, and BKF. There we go. Um, now since they are sitting on a heating pad, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add water to them, except I don't have my tap water bowl up here because I brought that downstairs. So, we're gonna take a look at the seeds first and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some more tap to them. Just because being on this pad, the paper towels are definitely gonna be drying out. I'm gonna be have, have to be a little more vigilant now. So I see one seed cracked. That is a good sign. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes, you can. That top seed has a little bit of a tap root sticking out there. I don't see any action going on with that other seed. Give it a couple days on the pad and we should see something. That was the green crack we just took a look at. Now we're going to take a look at the Bubba Kush seeds. And again, we got one seed cracked. I almost want to say two seeds cracked. Not quite sure. Um, yeah, that one is barely cracked right there, but we are seeing a defined tap root on that tap seed there. So it looks like our BKF is going to have two pop seeds already, which is good because those temps, I was seriously worried about the seeds last night, guys. It was worrisome. NYCDA. What do you got for us? What do you got for us? Oh, we got a crack seed. That's great. All right. So we got one out of two cracked with the uh, NYCDA. Could you guys see that on this one right there? Poking outwards. Can't really see it. Very minimal. Very small. But she is cracked. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Close you up, close you up, and let's take a look at our train wreck. Yeah, actually the paper towels there are just now beginning to lose some of their moisture. Um, and it looks like we have two pop seeds within our train wreck as well. Yes, we do. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Again, very very hard to see on that right seed there but you can see it on that left seed um so with that being said i'm gonna have to get some water i'm gonna have to moisten up these paper towels i'm gonna have to stop back at the hydroponic store tomorrow and i'm gonna have to pick up some soil because these girls are going to be ready to be planted within i'm gonna say no longer than two to three days so let me go grab some tap water. We're gonna finish up dribbling some water on our paper towels and then we're gonna close up the video. Okay, so we got our tap water here. So we're using just regular Northern Arcata tap water. Um, no distilled water, no reverse osmosis, nothing special. Um, I, like I said, I have not actually tested this water. I don't have my pH meter or my PPM meter. I'm just kind of winging it here, OGs, with this water. Now, water is in incredibly important when it comes to growing and when it comes to germinating. So it's something that's worth taking the time to look into and to use proper water. So if you're germinating seeds, I'd recommend three types of water. 
you can use distilled, you can use reverse osmosis, or you can use natural spring. You can also use your tap water at home if you know, um, you know what's inside your tap water. If you know the pH, if you know the PPMs, um, how hard your water content is, then by all means, if you have that information and you know it's sustainable for your seeds, go ahead and use it. But if you don't know, I would recommend getting a bottle of natural spring water, um, any purified reverse osmosis water, or distilled water. Distilled water is not the best for growing unless you're adding CalMag. Um, it can get the job done, but I wouldn't recommend it. Last season I was using distilled water and I'm happy to get off distilled water. Um, I really want to use reverse osmosis water this season, but we might be stuck with tap water this season. Um, hopefully it is basically reverse osmosis tap water, tap water that's low in um, hard water and a good pH balance, and, um, and it, it just comes to a, a decent PPM reading in between like 1 to 250 PPMs or something. Um, even 300 would be fine. Um, I felt like I wanted to say a little more. Oh yes, I do have a Rubbermaid out back that I'm collecting rainwater in, so I'm gonna be testing um, the rainwater versus the tap water to see which water we're gonna be working with. Um, but with that being said, that's gonna close out this video, day three of germination. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and as always, OGs, smash that subscribe button so you guys aren't missing out on any of these vlogs. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Um, for the time being, I don't have a monitor, so I know I'm still a little absent in the comment section below, but I plan to get my monitor and to be more active in the comment section come this week sometime. So be looking out for that, you guys. Thank you again for all the support. Much love, OGs. I will see you guys tomorrow.